Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how I uh, prepare a photo that I'm going to use as a reference photo for one of my uh, realistic paintings. Um, the subject here is a dog and not just a dog. <laughs> it's Nikki's parents' dog called Yuri. Um, but you can also use this tutorial if you're painting different subjects than dogs, maybe other animals or maybe people. I think it's really usable for uh, all the subjects. So please make sure to also check out the description box below the video. I've added some links to the software that I'm using and also to some of the materials in the video. And if you have any questions, uh, just leave them in the comment section. I'd love to answer them. Also, if you have any suggestions or maybe feedback or anything, just leave them in the comment section down below. And um, yeah, thanks for your support. Um, Please consider subscribing and liking if you like the video and uh, have a wonderful day. So the first thing that I always do is crop the image um, into the proportions that I'm probably going to use in my painting. So I'm planning on painting only Yuri's head. So that is why I'm cropping it in this size. And the next thing is that I really like to use it uh, I'd like to prepare somewhat of a example of how it's going to be. And I do this with using a selection tool in Photoshop that is um, automatically uh, selecting the object in the photo for me. So with um, expanding the edges, um, I make sure nothing gets cut off. And this way I only have Yuri's <laughs> only Yuri <laughs> in my photo. Um, and this way I can also check out how it's probably going to show on my paper. And um, I'm now expanding the canvas and I always use uh, the background later on just for reference. It just looks better when, <laughs> when you use a background or use the original background. But I just um, hide that uh, layer in Photoshop so I can work with only the head for now. And using the eyedropper tool, I'm going to select the different photos uh, or the different colors that are in Yuri's face. Um, so I'm creating new layers and I'm calling them fur, eyes, mouth, uh, all the different parts of his body. And the reason that I'm doing that is I'd like to hide uh, the things that I don't need in Photoshop. That is something that I particularly like using the layers. So that is why I'm using a layer for every part of his face. So this is it with the background. And I noticed <laughs> that the sides of this photo still were, were still black. So I needed to give them a white color by filling them. And now everything is set to go. And I'm just selecting my pencil tool and setting it to a quite small size. I don't want to um, have all these lines in my photo. It's also <laughs> already going to be a chaotic mess. So I don't want any bigger mess than necessary. And using the eyedrop tool, I am going to select the different colors that are in his fur. But before I can do that, I need to make sure I have the right um, settings of this photo. So that's the, that the contrast is good enough, uh, the lighting is good enough. It's quite a difficult photo because there's a lot of shadow in the right side of Yuri's face. So that is something that probably is going to be quite challenging when painting him. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that just now. So we'll see when I start painting. So just to make sure that I have the good set of colors, I'm also going to open a photo that was taken from a different angle, but on the same day. Um, when I can get the... Um, Colors right, I'm going to take this one as a reference as well. So first off, I start with the eyes. And um, the way that I decide on where to 
uh, look for the color is just something it's more like <laughs> intuition than it's like um, yeah then it's like something that I really think about it's just what I need to color with and I can always use the eyedropper tool later on the process if I see that I'm missing some colors I can also always open Photoshop I usually have Photoshop open when I draw so and what I'm doing is using the tool I'm just clicking on some parts of the face um, and making a line using the pencil tool and you see me clicking them now but later on I will use the shortcuts so I'm using an H for the hands to move the picture around use a I <laughs> for the eyedropper tool and um, the B for the pencil tool or the brush tool I think so I sometimes end up not using the colors that I've picked out in the um, reference photo but it's more that it's you can see this as a background study on your object before you start the painting just to learn more about the colors that the fur are built from so you will probably see that most of the dark fur actually has quite a lot of violets in them and quite a lot of blues and the nose is um, usually built up from blue as well and in this case Yuri has the, like the more fleshy rose toned um, nose and you will see that there are quite a lot of red tones in there as well but the highlights are also made of uh, blue tones so while I'm doing this <laughs> I see myself putting a brush down on his nose so Yuri had a light colored point <laughs> on his nose so <laughs> I'm glad I deleted that um, but the thing with reference photos is that it can be quite awkward to ask for the good photos um, especially people that aren't as experienced with photography can have a hard time making good photos the thing is that I feel quite awkward asking for better photos um, especially when I know somebody has all already put so much effort into the photo uh, into making good photos and I know they've I've really tried their best and uh, if they're still not good enough I tend to just go with it and use the photos anyway uh, the thing is that I haven't done like a lot of paintings just yet not like a really big load of paintings yet but I did do quite a lot of commissions over the past few months and um, yeah it's like in the Netherlands we say you throw in your own glasses <laughs> And that, are you throwing your own bottles? And that is something that I tend to do when I don't ask for better photos. So during the process, I realized that the photo won't work and I'm just giving myself a very hard time and I'm making it very complicated using, um, well, just moi photos, <laughs> you know, like that. Hmm. <laughs> so with Yuri, it was a different story because it's my mother-in-law that took them and it's okay I know the dog and well it's not commissioned or anything it's just a present for them so I don't mind necessarily if I have to um, guess some of the parts of the face or some of the details but um, would this be a commissioned painting I probably would have asked for even better photos so ex especially the resolu resolution um, is really important um, you need, have, you need to have the good quality photos so if you zoom into the photo you won't see uh, a really pixelated image um, even before you get to the details so now I'm doing a bigger brush point so I can add some uh, round dots at the end of the lines that's just for me so I can have a good reference otherwise I would work with only the lines and then it's just something that my head <laughs> doesn't like when deciding on the colors I do keep in mind that I want to have a darker color I need to have a light uh, highlight color and I need to have some medium tones so um, on the nose I will also use 
uh, the tool on like the really light spots just to make sure that I have the right highlight U or the highlight zone. The rest of the process I'm going to speed up a little because this is going to be super boring <laughs> if I would do this on like the uh, real time speed. Um, just so you guys can see the process but don't get bored. <laughs> So I'm just working on one of the last parts that I needed to do, Yuri's mouth. <laughs> so as you can see, there are some violets and some pinks and it's good to do, to do this to make sure that you have like the right color tone because especially with dogs, it can be quite surprising what colors their fur is built from. So this is like the chaotic mess <laughs> if you have any <laughs> all the layers on, so that is why I use uh, separate layers just to turn um, or to hide the layers that I don't use and um, uh, show the ones that I'm working on on that moment. So if I would work on the eyes, I would only have the eyes sh uh, layer shown. So the next thing that I'm going to do is decide on the color uh, of the background that I'm going to use. So uh, this is a painting that I'm going to do on pastel matte uh, by Claire Fontaine, Claire Fontaine. <laughs> and um, I have two sets of colors uh, in my collection and I've added um, quite similar colors into layers in Photoshop so I can decide on what background will be best with Yuri's face. So next up is the actual tracing. <laughs> so I'm working on pastel matte in the color dark blue, I think, and I've um, mounted my paper onto a piece of foam board. And um, this is something that I started doing just a couple of weeks ago because I like the fact that I can take this painting like upstairs if I want to sit in my studio, downstairs if I want to sit at the dining ta dinner table. So it's just easy to uh, take with me. Um, and I'm using white tracing paper. So the thing with tracing, <laughs> I still feel a bit like I'm cheating when I trace. And I've um, asked other artists about this and I wanted to know their opinion on tracing because it seems to be a subject that is kind of a taboo. People don't necessarily like to talk about it. <laughs> and it seems to be something that artists feel like they have to explain when they do um, something that I feel a bit embarrassed about and I thought well let's get it out of my system for once and for all I'm going to talk about tracing and I'm going to show you how I do it <laughs> so here's here's what I do I use a, a white graphite paper a graphite tracing paper so it's white graphite and um, the reason that I'm using white here is because I use a darker background uh, I also have like the gray graphite colored graphite paper um, the thing with tracing, I did feel, or maybe even <laughs> still feel, like it's cheating a bit, but I also realized that if I'm not going to trace, I would be able to draw a good dog. But people want me to draw their dog. And I can do that if I would have like maybe 10 hours <laughs> or something. 
I could make a good dog and I make I can I could draw a realistic dog and it would look like um, someone's dog but it will also take me a lot of time and a lot of frustration and I don't necessarily like drawing <laughs> so <laughs> that is why I trace it s saves me a lot of time um, I make sure um, that I really paint someone's dog or someone's animal or somebody when I trace because I can get like the very important details just right. So the proportions are right, the eyes are right, the mouth uh, are, uh, is right. And that is something that I feel is more important than my feeling of cheating. <laughs> So I do plan on creating a video on the different techniques of tracing because I'm using tracing paper here, but I'm also planning on going to use a projector. Uh, you've got like these opaque projectors. Um, you can use um, a drawing raster uh, for uh, drawing. It's not ex it's not tracing, but it's more of a drawing technique. And you can use like the old school. Um, tracing paper and there are several techniques so i'm going to do a video on that later but now it's all about yuri <laughs> and getting his face down on my pastel mat so regarding the paper i'm using pastel mat by claire fontaine and the reason that i'm using this is because it's just my um preferred paper i've tried several different papers i'm also trying to get the hang of it with velour because velour is something that emma colbert is using and i'm literally obsessed by her pastel videos and velour gives this really soft uh, looking effect which i really like with animals but it's just me and velour aren't friends yet <laughs> so that is why i'm drawing on pastel mat for now so with tracing um, you sh you could have you you could think that it's easy, but I think it's it can be quite challenging to get the lines onto your paper that you really need. So the things where I focus on are um, the places where the highlights are, the direction of the fur, um, like the fur on the head of Yuri is like straight. <laughs> not necessarily straight but it, it isn't curled and the rest of the hair is curled so I need to know where the curls are and the direction of the fur on the head um, I'm also focusing on the shading so if I see like a very typical part of a typical shadow I will um, mark that as well so I'm just checking if I'm using the right side of my paper <laughs> I'm also uh, I'm having trouble remembering how I need to use my transfer paper. So and now I'm just marking in the lines. There are a few parts of a face that are important to uh, get down right uh, to really create a realistic pa painting that really looks alike. Um, those are the eyes, the reflection of the eyes, the nose. And the proportions of the face so the proportions of the beak and the side of the head and the ears so that is uh, something that i tend to focus on to make sure that i th that i have those traced uh, so i can mess those <laughs> mess those up and the rest uh, i usually draw freehand or sometimes I just trace the whole head just it depends on how i'm feeling that day <laughs> Like if I'm feeling brave, I'm going to freehand the, <laughs> the last part. And if I feel like, Mwah, I'm just going to trace everything.
So once I get all the lines down, it's time to uh, check if it's good enough. And I think it looks good. So these are quite wide lines. Um, so it's important to use a um, kneaded eraser to soften those lines a bit. Otherwise, they probably will show. Um, with this case, Yuri is a white dog, so it's not necessarily a blonde dog. So it not, it's not that big of a problem if you see the lines. But um, would you create a dark dog or a dark colored dog? Make sure to erase the lines because you would regret it otherwise. So I noticed that there is a part of um, Yuri's fur that I can get right um, because there is so much light shining on that part of his fur. So here I'm trying to do some different techniques to make it a bit darker or get a, some more contrast in. Um, but you will see <laughs> that I won't be able to do that. It's just too light and I can't get it right and this is not going to work. So the thing that I do when I run into these kind of problems is just go and ask for a better picture <laughs> or maybe a different picture. And in this case, I had several photos of Yuri, also one in a different angle. And um, it was actually mirrored because he was standing on the other side of the path. And um, it was super easy to use that photo as a reference. So I will show you later on how I draw, drew in the last part. So like I said, you need to use a kneaded eraser to um, soften the lines if you would paint a darker dog or a more not blonde colored dog. So I actually found out that this needed eraser wasn't working. So I'm using a different eraser here. It's a dust free eraser by Faber Castell. And I 
kind of like this one. So make sure when you're working on pastel mat or any different other type of sanded paper or paper with a tooth that you don't press too hard on the paper because you might end up ruining the tooth. <laughs> So now it's going to be a freehand drawing. Now, I didn't feel brave today, but I needed to do this. <laughs> but I, it's okay. It's a photo that is taken from a different angle and it's quite easy to use um, for this part of Yuri's fur. Um, I'm using a white Carbotello pastel pencil. I actually use like literally all pastel brands, <laughs> um, but the Carbotello is just one that I had on hand, so that, that is why I'm using the white one uh, by Stabilo. Um, I'm not going to show you the whole process of the painting, uh, but if you're interested in seeing the finished piece and the finished painting of Yuri, please go uh, visit my Facebook page and like and follow the page. Uh, I will definitely uh, post the finished project or the finished painting over there. So for now, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section. I'd love to answer them. And um, please make sure to check out the description box as well. I've um, included some of the links to the software that I'm using like Premiere Pro and Photoshop and also some of the materials that I've used in this video. So for now, I hope I hope that I showed you a technique that is also very usable for you and I've hope i inspired you to draw yourself and um, for now thanks for your support and have a wonderful day